The great meeting is on. With much delight, we announce to you today that the great meeting is on. What makes this meeting so great is that no meeting of this magnitude has ever taken place among our people here in the United States of America. This great meeting is taking place in the Moorish Science Temple of America, which is a holy and divine movement founded in 1913 A.D. by our prophet, Noble Drew Ali, coming to us at a time when we were just out of slavery, where the physical bonds that bound us to that institution of slavery had been abolished by the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. Now, the laws of men were very successful in removing those physical shackles that bound us to the institution of slavery. But the laws of man so far have been unable to remove that mental slavery, that condition of uh, mental slavery that our people now experience. The laws of man have been unable to remove that mental bond of slavery. But in this great meeting, we are coming together and putting aside once and for all those mental bond of slavery and preparing ourselves to take our place in the affairs of men. Greetings, Islam, to you all. My name is P. Davis Eel. I am a member and an officer of the Moorish Science Temple of America. We're here this evening to invite you to this great meeting. In this great meeting, the agenda is love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. And the subject matter with which, with which we'll be discussing and dealing is nationality and divine creed for our people here in the United States of America. We are returning those names that were given to us during slavery, Negro, Black, Colored, Ethiopian, and even African American. We are returning those names back to the institution of slavery because, in fact, they are just as unconstitutional in 1993 as slavery is itself. When the Constitution abolished slavery, it abolished everything pertaining to slavery. Even the names Negroes, colored folks, black people, and Ethiopians, and even more recently African Americans. And we are returning to the name and principle of our forefathers. That nationality, that name being Moorish, Moorish America. We are Moorish American because we are descendants of Moroccans and born here in America. Just as the Irish Americans are descendants of Irish, just as the German Americans are descendants of German, just as the French Americans are descendants of French and the Mexicans and so forth and so on. And so it is then that we, the Moorish Americans, by operation of the same principle, by of the same uh, divine law of birthright, that we are returning to the names of our forefathers, that being Moorish America. Before we proceed, we'd like to tell you just a little bit about the founder of our organization, Prophet Noble Drew Ali. Now, he is a prophet to us, and that may sound strange, 
somewhat unbelievable, unbelievable to most of our people. But there's a reason for that. Before we can have a divine right, before we can be recognized as people of worth, we must see ourselves as being worthy of a divine prophet. It's very important. It's called self-respect, which says that no one is going to respect us until we respect ourselves. No one is going to regard us in the light of nations until we see ourselves as being worthy of a divine prophet. One of the things that our people struggle with here in the United States of America at this very time is a lack of self-esteem. They regard themselves as being nobody, as coming from nowhere, as going nowhere. They see their lot and their destiny are to ride along on somebody else's coattail, to, to be the re receptacle for somebody else's ideas. And if we don't have our own ideas, then we are subject to that. Then someone can give us their vision of what they think that we should be. They can give us their vision of what they think is divine and holy. But when we return to our own, when we recognize the divinity in our own self, then we have no problem. We have no problem in recognizing one of our own as having been divinely prepared and sent to us. Just as in the days of Jesus, he was divinely prepared and sent to his people. Just as in the days of the prophet Muhammad, he was divinely prepared and sent to his people. And the same is true for Buddha. And the same is true for Confucius. In fact, the people of India or the people of Arabia uh, would have a problem if they're a divine one came to them in the image of somebody else. Because if he comes in the image of somebody else and he comes from some foreign land, he may not understand just what we're going through. And so our prophet, Noble Zhu Ali, was born here among us in the year 1886 in the state of North Carolina. He looked like us. He walked like us. He talked like us. He understood our problem. He understood the condition of mental slavery that our people are experiencing here in North America better than anyone who could come from some foreign land, who could have come from across the water somewhere. And so he is one of us having come forth from the loins of our own father, having come forth from the womb of our own mother, just as the prophets of those days came forth from the womb of their mother and from the loins of their father. And because of that, they were able to communicate with the people they were sent to redeem. They were, they were able to restore to them that connection with the ancient and with the divine that they had strayed away from. And so it is with our prophet, Noble Zhu Ali. He came to us, having received his nourishment from the same breast of the same mother from which we nourish having come forth from the same loins and from the same protection 
of the same fathers to which we came. And if we cannot see our own mothers and our own fathers as being divine, then we're still enslaved. That is why it is so important that we study Noble Drew Ali, that we heed his call, that we return to the creed and principles of our forefathers, that we fulfill the prophecy that says that the time would come when every nation should worship under its own vine and fig tree and every tongue should confess his own. So we announce to you today that in this great meeting that we, the Moorish Americans, have returned to our own vine and fig tree, the one that gave our forefathers nourishment and sustained them in the past, that vine and fig tree that we strayed away from because we thought that the grass was greener on the other side. We thought that somebody else's ideas were better than ours. We thought that somebody was smarter than we were. We thought that somebody was more divine than we were. And so we ended up believing then that somebody else carried our salvation with them. We found ourselves worshiping under somebody else's vine and fig tree and confessing somebody else's tongue. But just as their vine and fig tree was prepared for them and only them, then it won't sustain us. It didn't sustain us in the past and it won't sustain us in the future. We have to return to that divine source, to that divine salvation, to that everlasting gospel, to that saving power, which comes from the great God of the universe himself through our ancient fathers by his power. Noble Drew Ali taught us many things. He taught us that here in the United States of America that there was only one supreme issue for our people to use in order to regain that which was lost. And it was proclaimed our free national name and religion before this constitutional government of the United States of America. He called upon other citizens of the United States of America for moral support and for finance to help him in his great uplifting work of bringing our people out of the darkness and into the light. Now that moral support, what he meant when he said he was asking for moral support from other citizens of the United States of America, he was saying to them, just acknowledge the truth. Simply acknowledge the truth. Acknowledge the fact that there can be no Negro, colored or black, as a citizen of the United States of America. Acknowledge that simple fact. Acknowledge that our people, historically speaking, are the descendants of Moroccans and born in America. Acknowledge that they are not Christians. 
And that shouldn't be a problem because the United States of America and the Constitution, one of the greatest legal documents of all time, provides for religious freedom. It opens the door for religious freedom. And all may enter through it and worship as they see fit. And with respect to the First Amendment, it doesn't matter so much whether someone disagrees with your religious views. If someone disagrees with your religious views, that's all right. But the legal right, and I emphasize legal right, the legal right to oppose individuals and organizations alike for their religious belief does not exist in the United States of America. The door of religious freedom made by the Constitution swings open for all and all may enter through it and worship as they see fit. To those who may disagree with us, it's fine to disagree, but we have a common problem. That problem is called the condition of the so-called Negro people. Our prophet, Noble Drew Ali, referred to it as the Negro problem. And left unsolved, then that problem will begin to eat away. In fact, it is already eating away at the constitutional foundation of the United States of America. Imagine that you go and buy a new house. And from the outside, everything looks just fine. You go in and take a look around, and everything is, is satisfactory. But unbeknownst to you, there are termites eating away at the support beams, and at the structure, and at the foundation of that house. And that's the way it is here in the United States of America. This condition, this Negro condition, is eating away at the constitutional foundation of the United States of America. And unless that condition uh, is resolved, unless it's solved, then the first stormy wind that blows by is going to demolish the whole foundation. And so those who disagree, those who have been historically opposed to our propagation of Islamism, and those who may be uh, somewhat apprehensive about us being Muslims here in America, consider that we have a common problem that the Prophet Noble Zhu Ali said that we are trying to help this national government. We are trying to resolve that long-standing issue that has remained since slavery for 128 years. <clears throat> and that it seems to be uh, impervious to any kinds of solutions that have been offered in the past 128 years. That money so far has not solved the problem. That education by itself hasn't solved the problem. That the voting rights and politics hasn't solved that problem. In fact, year by year, we see that problem continue to get worse and worse and worse. We say that the only way that problem can be solved 
is that we have to go back to the source. We have to go back to the root. That it is a, it is a problem of the, of the spirit and the soul of our people. And that the sociologists and the psychologists and the psychiatrists, psychiatrists and the penologists are only treating symptoms of a problem. That problem is a spiritual problem. That problem is a, is a problem involving the essence, involving the soul of our people. And just as that process, uh, as that divine process uh, came about in, re in removing uh, the consciousness from our people, we have to reverse it and we have to apply the same logic and we have to apply the same treatment. It's sort of like giving eyesight to the blind. It's like raising the dead. It's like restoring consciousness to the unconscious. And that's, in essence, is what we're talking about here. We're talking about restoring consciousness to the unconscious. We're talking about giving eyesight to the blind again. We're talking about raising up the dead, just as Jesus raised up Lazarus in those ancient days. You know, the spirit of resurrection is in the land. And we, Moorish Americans, we are rising up from the graves one by one. And we are preparing ourselves to take our place in the affairs of men. So we say to you, all of our people, that the one that our fathers and mothers prayed for in those days of physical slavery, in the cotton fields of Alabama, in the burning hot sun in Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, when they said, Lord have mercy on my soul, they were calling for the one who came to us in the year 1886 from their own wounds and from their own loins. He is our prophet. He is going to, he is restoring that, that thought to us. Because thought is really the cause of everything. He said to us that if I can get you to thinking, you can save yourself. And so we ask our people to come hear the teachings of Noble Drew Ali, come to this great meeting. The great meeting is on, it's on now. All of those who think that your condition can be better, come. This is a movement open to strong men and women to uplift the nation and take our place in the affairs of men. Let me say that we, as a clean and pure nation, descended from the inhabitants of Africa, do not desire to amalgamate or marry into the families of the pale-skinned nations of Europe. Neither serve the gods of their religion because our forefathers are the true and divine founders of the first religious creed for the redemption and salvation 
of mankind on earth. We're not opposed to Christianity. We're not opposed to Judaism. We're not opposed to anyone else's religion because it was prepared by their forefathers for their earthly salvation. Just as Islamism was prepared by our forefathers for our earthly and divine salvation. <clears throat> we believe that over time that these ancient hatreds that have divided us on the issues of religion, we believe that in time and with patience and with tolerance those religious differences would no longer prevent us from working together toward the fulfillment of the great work of all masterminds, and that is to restore the heritage of man, to bring him back to the estate that he lost. We, the Moy Science Temple of America, was founded for the uplifting of fallen humanity. We are a friend to mankind, just as we understand it to be in our interest that mankind be friendly toward us. We're inviting all our people, those who regard themselves as being Negroes, colored, black, Ethiopian, come to the Moorish Science Temple of America. Our prophet said to us, come good people, I bring you a message of hope and salvation. Before it's too late, he said, come now. 